Hello everybody, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another CSGO News Weekend Recap. I hope you guys all enjoy, had a great weekend. I had a great weekend full of CSGO streams, reading great comments, so thank you all for the great feedback down below as well in the comment section. I hope you guys all enjoy today's episode of CSGO News. A lot happened in the past few days. Let's hop into it though, and the first story is a super exciting one about the biggest and most well-known skin creator in the CSGO community that a lot of you guys probably do not know about. His name is The Honey Badger. I'll link his profile down below if you guys wanna go and peek all of his artwork creations, all of his folders down there. And again, I do wanna shortly say before I get into this first story that there are so many skin creators out there so many that have contacted me that I look through all their profiles all their artworks there are so many amazing creators that do not get enough attention if you guys know any feel free to DM me on Twitter about them and I'd love to reach out for them and actually share their creations maybe in the future for another story out there but the honey badger is actually brought up today because of course this past weekend we had the brand new CSGO clutch case come out it's a pretty cool case as well as you guys can see some of the skins on screen almost 20 new gloves have been now been added into the game and of course they're still astounding prices as the case is only a few days old. I will be opening 10 of these cases probably next video. I'm waiting to get a sponsor though so I can use all of that sponsor money to open cases for all of you. But let's get into the real details about this. Of course, I want to bring up why the Honey Badger is actually being mentioned. He actually landed not just one skin in this case, but also two skins. And those are the Augustin Valiant as well as the new Swag 7 Mag 7 or the Mag 7 Swag 7. Kind of a meme weapon when you think about it because everyone always used to call it the Swag 7 ever since the funny name skins and McSkillet brought up that name. So it's kind of funny he based it off that. Two very, you know, pretty, pretty simple skins especially with the mag 7 but I do also want to list off this guy is the most well-known skin creator in the game right now because he has countless skins out there one of them being the CZ 75 Jean Galou he also made the Deagle Kumiko or Kumicho dragon however you want to pronounce that the M4 Evil Diamo the P2000 Imperial Dragon and also on top of that on top of all the countless skins he's so far made money off of through, through CSGO which is insane to say he also has the swag 7 sticker and the llama cannon sticker so if you guys want to know how to make money through creating stuff Stuff, maybe contact this guy. He is doing it correctly. I think to this date, he is probably the number one uh, biggest skin creator in CSGO case history. So that's amazing to see, guys. He landed two skins in this previous case, and I will be opening clutch cases sometime in the future. Now, bouncing off that to our second story, kind of a, a funny story out there, actually brought to me by one of my Discord members, Jelly. Thanks to him, guys. We actually have War Owl telling us the actual history, where the word smurfing came from. And originally, it was actually from World of Warcraft. I'll let, you, let him explain it to all of you. And I do, there's a little bit of controversy on this. There's other other kind of uh, theories out there as to where the word smurf or where smurfing came from but here's War Owl's opinion as well as the post on screen guys originally a post back in January I believe 2015 which talks about where smurfing did come from so if any of you guys are ever curious want to tell your friends or maybe I don't know your parents if they really care here's where smurfing came from yes technically I am smurfing so smurfing first came around during uh, Warcraft 3 where you had to basically choose if you wanted to play against somebody or not right there were lobbies. So the highest level player in the game, players in the game, nobody would play against them. They'd just be like, well, I'm just going to lose. And those guys still wanted to play, right? So they created fake accounts, or alternate accounts, not fake accounts, of Papa Smurf and Smurfette. And played against people with them. That's where the term Smurf comes from. So the idea of Smurfing is just playing on an alternate account so people don't recognize you. Which is what I'm doing. It's come to be. It's come to be like uh, people who get a purposefully low-ranked account in order to smash noobs. And also in some sad news, obviously don't want to put this in the title of the thumbnail. I do want to shout out Sparkle's last video. If you guys did actually watch this, one of his really good friends from the Counter-Strike Source days, so kind of in CS Source news here, uh, one of his good friends named Conrad actually did pass away. He actually did a tribute video to him, and it was a very touching video if you guys did watch that. And of course, my, my history with Sparkle is a very nice guy, very good content creator, and just overall a very genuine guy. So I'll link his video down below, and I did want to shout that out if you guys didn't watch that video. A uh, really cool edit to watch as well. He shows one of Conrad's pieces of work from Counter-Strike Source. So I wanted to share that with all of you, and uh, best of luck, be strong, Sparkles. We've all had losses in our life, and I can tell you're really affected by this one. So stay strong, man, and keep on producing content. So on top of that, though, also, in some more drama out there in some CSGO teams, we actually have Team Windigo alongside No Man's Hot. If you guys don't know the No Man's Hot roster this past weekend, they actually had Zai Wu, the French superstar, the one who's being offered six figures but will stay in school instead uh, for, I think, it's six more months before he's actually signed by any French team or any team at all. An uprising star, he was actually a stand-in player this past weekend for this roster known as No Man's Hot. They also have people uh, on that roster like Tenski and Asilian. It's a pretty solid roster, especially for a tier two, tier three team. They destroyed Team Windigo this past weekend. Windigo's actually a Bulgarian team with like Victor and, and Bubble, if you guys recognize those names as well. They actually destroyed them. I believe it was 16-2 in the final match. There was some drama though on the server, and let's see if you guys can catch this. I'll play the clip for you right now.
So if you guys saw in that clip, it was pretty obvious what the issue was. Windigo had uh, some con internet connection issues. They wanted to pause the match before, and of course, you guys could tell early on there, within eight rounds of the game being started, they had already used all four of their timeouts with some severe connection issues. And of course, in the chat, we also had Spellin call them out for not actually pausing. He then calls the team a pussy, and of course, we had them respond to that as well. And uh, we also had, I believe it was uh, how you pronounce this name. I, I don't want to mess this up for all of you. We also have Nucky. I think that's how you pronounce it. He fires back. Do you want to be on Reddit? And uh, well, it's it was on Reddit, and that's where we found this clip. So I want to know what you guys think about this. What are your opinions about this? Obviously, Windigo reached out to the team, and they said, can we pause the match before so they don't have to waste time out so they can figure out their internet connection issues? And then, of course, on, not, on, on No Man's Hot Side, they, of course, didn't want to pause the match. They wanted to get the match over with. It really kind of goes, what's the question? Well, you know, what's the actual issue here? Would you have paused the match? It depends for how long. Would their internet connection actually have been any better? Do you delay the match? You know, obviously, a lower tier match. Do you delay it to the next day and see what happens then? Do you guys blame uh, No Man's Hot for actually not pausing the match and continuing to play on anyway? I just, I, there's kind of a big controversy here. Who really, I mean, is it really that big of a deal? It just seemed like a little bit of controversy, of course, uh, with them calling their team pussies just for not pausing. I'm not sure it's really worth the, the tension here. Anyway, moving on. And also, very last in today's episode of CSK News, I do want to talk about some tweets out there every now and again. And of course, we have the man himself, Pasha Biceps, tweeting out this and very peculiarly. Now, I know there's a lot of responses out there. Most responses thought he was joking. Some people, though, were still quite confused. And I myself was one of those people. So let's think about the context of why he would actually say this. And when I first actually saw this tweet, I thought about two weeks back when they actually benched Taz for Mihu and the CEO came out with an interview in HLTV and he said, we can expect future changes or announcements for Virtus Pro coming sometime in March. Now, it was speculated that it might be Neo or any other underperformers on that team could be kicked or benched themselves as well following Taz. And so the overall question is, was he joking? Of course, I think he really was. I think he'll stay on the team. But I was kind of shocked as well. The overall response was very positive. A bunch of you guys, of course, we love Pasha Biceps. But a lot of the responses were saying, yes, congratulations, go full-time streaming. And that was kind of crazy to see. But I do think this might have been a subtle joke or maybe a subtle, I don't know, subtle, a subtle jab at the upper management of C uh, Virtus Pro, maybe saying, yeah, kick me if you want. Or if you really want to kick me, go ahead and do it. I don't care. I don't know if he was joking. I'm sure he was, guys. But I do think there was kind of a subtle underlying thing or context here that we don't know about. And it could be hinted at the upper upper level of Virtus Pro. Maybe he's making a joke towards them. We could be wrong, though. We'll see what happens with Virtus Pro in the future. Of course, if you guys want to watch Star Series, I'm going to be watching that the rest of today. It's an amazing tournament, and I love the format so far. The format, I think a lot of teams are getting kind of lucky. So far, we're seeing a lot of, it's either very, very close matches between some really good teams, or it's very, very far apart teams. Like, uh, uh, to give you guys examples, you, I, I'll link it down below for all of you. I feel like we have a lot of good teams playing some teams that maybe they would obviously be beating, if that makes sense at all. But it's a great format. It's a Swiss format, best of threes, which means the first teams to three wins in those best of three series move on. And of course, the first teams to lose three matches will be eliminated. So it's been a great format so far. I love this format because it definitely chooses the best teams to move on forward. And why I'm talking about that is, of course, Virtus Pro day one, they lost their best of three to Mouse Sports. Although it was debatably kind of close, they got kind of lucky with an overtime win on Nuke. Uh, of course, this being with Mihu on that new roster as well. They did quite well, but of course, they did eventually lose to them and they barely beat MVP PK yesterday. Now, why I'm worried about this, I do want to quickly clarify. They just had Mihu added to the team. So of course, it's going to take some time to get used to him being on that roster. But I do want to say they barely beat. They had a couple overtime matches versus MVP PK. If you don't know, this was the fourth place finisher in the Asian minor qualifier or the, the Asian major qualifier. This was the team behind Flash Gaming. So remember how Flash Gaming did at the major? This is the team that placed a whole spot behind them in the major qualifier for the Asian scene. Just to give you an idea of how comparably low tier that team is compared to everyone else here, by far and away, they are the underdog team of this tournament and they almost beat Virtus Pro on two maps. Uh, they beat them on one, they almost beat them on two others that went to overtime. Just to put that in perspective, it's not looking amazing for Virtus Pro. Of course, it takes some time, but what do you guys think about that? As always, hope you guys all enjoy. Please do me a favor. If you want me to talk about this, uh, there's other story out there involving Optic Gaming. Now, it's not really CSGO news related, but if you guys do watch Optic Gaming uh, content very closely, you know about this drama between their owner, Hector, and one of their creators known as Hitch. It's actually an overwhelming, it's a really, really great story and kind of a sad story as well. If you guys want me to talk about that in my next episode, maybe towards the end of the video, please comment down below Optic or anything if you guys are actually interested, and I would love to cover that story. As always, hope you guys all enjoy. If you guys did, leave a like or comment down below. Hope you all enjoy. My name is Jake Morale, like you. I'll see you all in a couple days, and thank you for the great weekend, guys. I do appreciate it very much. Goodbye.